Hello, and welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to be covering organic texturing in 3D Coat. I'll be talking about the different techniques that you use for 3D Coat, how you can make smart materials that work with organic texturing, and all the different painting tools and operations that will help bring your creature or your character to life and make it look that much more convincing in whatever rendering engine you are bringing it to, whether that is a game, or an animation, or something else. So, let's get started. Okay, here we are. We are back in 3D Coat, finally. So, first thing I'll have to do is import the model. So, file, import, model for per pixel texturing. It's this one I want. And much like the alien creature that I tutorialed a little while ago, this one has two separate UV sets. They are both meant to be at 2048 maps. As you saw, if I just change the first one, it'll change all the subsequent ones. Hit OK. And there's our model. So the next thing I need to do is I need to import the normal maps that I baked out for this creature. So textures, import, normal map. I'll need to choose which set it should go to, so I'll do the body first. Load that in. Just make sure the presets here are the exact same as the ones you used when you were originally exporting the normal map. So in this case I'm still using Unity because this is for my game. Hit OK. There's the first normal map. And while I'm here I'm going to rename that to body normal map and I'll import the other one. Excellent. Now that our normal maps are imported we need to bake out our first two texture maps, the curvature map and the occlusion map. If you watched my tutorial on the assembly crane this is exactly the same procedure. Go to textures, calculate curvature, and this might take a little bit because it has to bake it out for two separate texture maps, not just one. There we go. And the occlusion. Great. The occlusion map's looking good. So I'll just reduce its opacity to decrease its strength a little bit, maybe down to 75%. There we go. And now we can start making our first texture layer. So I'll use this layer one. I'll just rename that to base skin. And I'm going to start this texture off with a smart material. Now I did a little bit of texturing work earlier, so I already made a smart material for this, but I'll explain how it works. So here I have this skin smart material. So I'll go to the smart material editor. And all that this smart material does is that it has a base layer here that is white, but that white modulates whatever color we have here in our color picker. So as you see, that's what this little star icon means. We can either replace or modulate it. So when I modulate it, that means that if I change the color up here, you'll see the smart material color changes. So I have that as my base color. I have a little bit of depth applied with a leathery texture map and then I also applied some noise to it. Now the reason I applied the noise is so that the depth is not applied uniformly across the entire material. You'll see if I bring forth the preview you'll notice that some areas have very strong depth maps and other areas have very weak depth maps. I may actually go into my noise panel here and just increase the brightness of that a little bit so that everywhere has at least a tiny bit of depth applied. I then also have a very simple dirt texture for the roughness in order to get some varied glossy details as you see down here on the bottom. On top of that, I also have a gray layer that is also set to modulate. What this means is that both of these layers will actually use the exact same color, but the layer above will be slightly darker because it's being multiplied by a gray value instead of white. Now this is only applied in the concave areas, so what that means is you'll see here 
is that the concave areas on the model will be slightly darker than the rest of the model, no matter what color I end up picking. Okay, I'll save that because I did actually make some changes to it. And then the color I've decided for these creatures is some, going to be some kind of slightly desaturated but pretty dark purple color. Something like that. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now you'll may, you may notice that there's no depth information being applied here, and that's because my depth channel is turned off. If I turn that back on and then increase my brush strength, you should start to see the depth channel of the smart material showing through. If I really increase the strength, then you can see it. I'll decrease my strength again, and I can drag the magnifying to change the scale of the textures. Okay, that ought to be pretty good. I'll fill this entire layer using the fill tool. Now a lot of this model will not be this base skin color, like these shells will be painted with more of a bony material, but I'm not ready to paint that just yet. We're going to focus on the skin first. So now let's break up the color. We don't want this to just be a solid purple all the way around. I want there to be some patterns that are painted onto the skin with a different color. So I'll make a new layer and I'll call this one black skin. And I keep it on a separate layer so that I can perform color operations to it without affecting the rest of the skin. I'll go back to the paintbrush tool and I'm going to change my color and now I'm going to make it a pretty dark gray. I almost never set my painting color to be pure black because as I mentioned in the assembly crane tutorial, pure black doesn't show up very well in most lighting engines. So a dark gray will convey that effect much better. There we go. And now I can start painting. However, one thing I want to make sure of is that I actually turn depth painting off. The reason for this is that when I paint with this same smart material, it'll start to add more and more of that depth texture that I described. The depth has already been painted into the model with our base skin layer, so we don't want to be adding anything in addition to that. We want all of the depth information for our skin to be coming from that one layer so that it's all uniform. When I turn off the depth painting, I'll only be painting new color and glossiness information without adding any additional depth. So before I get too far ahead of myself, let me grab my tablet. All right, let's focus on the tail. Now the grid, as you can see, is kind of getting in my way. So I can click this grid icon up here in the menu bar to get rid of it. Now there is nothing obstructing my view. So as you see, I can paint him. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the stroke mode to be the second option here so that the brush opacity will change with my pen pressure but not the radius. And, and I'm going to change my alpha to be something a lot softer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to very faintly block in the areas that I want to be this other color. I'll turn on symmetry first, and cross the x-axis and then hide the symmetry plane so it's not getting in my way. And I'll just start painting. Just have these colors sort of very softly going into the rest of the tail. Let me make that a bit more defined up here. Kind of following the sculpted details that I already have. Okay, next I'm going to start focusing on the rest of the body. 